Hi everybody, welcome to EcoDriver. My name is Helmut. This is one of three tests I have done with the Kia e Nero or Nero Electric, and in this video I try to find out what's more efficient trying to regenerate as much as energy as possible or as little as possible. I've done the same test with the younger brother of the e Nero, the EV6, and to be honest, I don't expect a much different result here, as in theory, it's clear and obvious which way of driving is more efficient. If you want to see the EV6 video, you'll find the link in the description box below. How does this test look like? Well, I do four laps of a circa six kilometer loop in city traffic. The first two, I try to let the car coast as much as possible. And in lap three and four, I try to regenerate as much energy as possible. After every lap, we check the overall consumption. And at the end, we analyze the data. As you can see, I've set the region to level zero. So if I lift my foot off the accelerator, the car isn't braking at all. This is my normal driving style. And in addition, I try to look ahead, read the road and avoid the active use of energy as much as possible. I leave the cameras on on the first full lap for you to see how I am driving and how the lab looks like. As an example, you can see that the traffic light ahead of us is red and so I'm lifting my foot off the accelerator and the car is coasting towards the red light, losing almost no speed. Of course, I need to come to a stop as the light hasn't turned green yet, but I try to brake as little as possible. I know it's appealing to think it might make sense to brake a lot as you get energy back into the battery and therefore you drive in a more efficient way. But the crux with this thought is that in order to regain energy, you need to invest energy beforehand. And as we found out in our mountain and region test, you'll find the link below or at the end of this video, you'll never ever get back what you have invested. If you're doing it perfectly well, you get back between 40 and 50% as a maximum. And what you also must not forget is that it also requires quite a lot of energy to keep the car at speed in order to have enough momentum to make use of the brake and then regenerate. Here again, the light around 200 meters ahead is red. I lift my foot and we are coasting towards it. You see, the, the speed is, is barely reducing. Yes, as order, the light turns green and we can keep the momentum and avoid the braking and re-accelerating. I did recuperate a bit less than if I had stayed in the accelerator a bit longer, but as the light turned green at the right moment, I didn't have to invest as much energy as I would have had to if I had braked later and stronger. So I saved energy there as well. Next example, at the end of the bridge ahead, there is a red light with three cars already waiting. So I avoid strong acceleration and hopefully I can pass this light without stopping and it might turn green soon. Yes, again, it's our lucky day. And we made it right in time before it switches back to red. Thank you. 
After two laps of almost no region, we have 9.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Now I turn on level three of region with the pedals. That means if I lift my foot off the accelerator, the car is braking quite strongly. But to clear up a potential misunderstanding, this isn't a comparison one pedal drive versus no one pedal drive, as you can coast a lot in one pedal drive mode as well, although it means it's quite tiring to try to find and keep the point of no power and no region on the pedal. And you can also region a lot with the region set to level zero. You're just slamming on the brakes all the time. This is about driving style, not drive mode. Coming to the end of lap 4 of this test, the last two laps with as much region as possible. If we click through the info here, we see the car tells me 99% economical driving and 1% normal. These are the same figures, I don't know how this is calculated, but these are the same figures uh, that I had after the first two laps, so I didn't accelerate harder or brake so hard that I couldn't regenerate 100% of the potential energy. And when we go back to consumption, we have 9.9 .9 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Now, let's have a look at the details. Okay, I have entered the consumption after every lap in this table, and here we see the consumption per lap. It's 10.0 and 9.2 when I tried to coast as much as possible, and 10.5 and 9.9 .9 when I tried to recuperate as much as possible. That's an average of 9.6 versus 10.2 or 6.3 higher consumption when trying to regen as much as possible. If you look at the trip time per lap, uh, with no regen, we had the first time uh, we had the first lap with 18 minutes and 39 seconds. Uh, this was the lap you saw in full, and this was heavily affected by traffic and the red lights, whereas the other laps were much faster. Considering that, the difference might have been even bigger. And I can tell you that I have done more of those tests with other EVs and uh, the differences were up to over 20% in favor of less regen. If you want to see those videos, feel free to subscribe this channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you won't miss any new video. Here you find the consumption test I've done with the e Nero on the Eco Travel Loop and below that there is the mountain consumption and regeneration test. That's it for the e Nero. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time.